In this video, we're going to have a look at uh, a setup done in VOP uh, to replicate the curve solver or the follow curve mode uh, that we have on the inverse kinematic chop solver. So using object nodes, you can create bones and position those bones on a curve using that solver. So if I, if I hide these nodes around, so I have a curve, so this is a normal sub curve. And I have object nodes, bones, that are set up using a kinematic solver. And it's called the follow curve solver. So you give it a curve and a list of bones, and it's, go it's, it's able to put the bones on the curve. Uh, so this solver doesn't, doesn't uh, support stretching. So it won't be modifying the the stretch of the curve. So that's something we have in the new node. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the setup in SOP. So I'm going to hide uh, these guys here. I'm going to leave the, the curve uh, visible. And we're just going to have a quick look at those three nodes. So Geo, Geo1 is a SOP network where we do all the work uh, of SOP rigging. So this is where we're going to spend the most time. Uh, display links is uh, just a sub network that is using a copy two points to copy uh, bone, a bone geometry onto each point. And this is to replicate or to have a better visualization of, uh, of what we had in sub. And display tube is uh, just a bone deform uh, with a subnet here, and this is like fetching three inputs from uh, my Geo1 uh, subnetwork. So this is to be able to use display flag of object nodes to control the visibility of visualization. Okay, so I'll go through this small scene. So I have my tube, and this is captured to a line. So this line is something that I created here. So this is a normal line sop. Uh, I'm putting names on it. I'm running the reorient joint. So this is to get the orientation properly. And I'm feeding that to a marker. So I'm using those markers along with object merge nodes uh, to organize the network. And this is what the fetch is doing there, fetching the rest. I'm doing a small modification to uh, rename the tip. So if we just dive in there, so that's a bone capture lines. So this is converting uh, the sub lines to something that the bone captured by harmonic can can use. Okay, so I go rest. Uh, so here I just have like three points. Uh, I'm building a simple control rig out of the three points. So adding a small animation on it, so you see that. Let's show the, the axis. So that's my animation. And those are my control joints. So this is like a, a procedural curve. So I'm gonna use that to create a curve. And that's what I have here. So from those three points, I'm using that as control points on a busy curve. And this gives me my curve that I'm going to use uh, to put the joints on. So the rig at rib uh, so it's almost like an at rib VOP, only there is a state associated with it. So you have the KinFX rig at rib VOP state. Uh, that's a Python file we ship with. Uh, you can go and like create another state out of it if you want. Uh, but this one allows me to visualize the inputs and the output of the node all at the same time. So if I disable the display inputs, I'm just going to see the output of the node. If I enable it, I also see, uh, so this one is like control joints. So this comes from this input. So it's this node. And the other one is called, I think, rest. So middle rest. So this comes from the, the first input. So I have the solve curve node. So this is the VAP node. Uh, it's connected to a set point transform. 
So what you need to do is to give it the points to work on. So this is what we call the target points. Uh, here I'm giving star, so this is going to act on all the points from the first input. So if I go there, this is my rest geometry that I had. Uh, so the control input, so it's going to be uh, named joints. Uh, this is a procedural setup. So here I only have three three points. Uh, so if I go here, so I have middle, root, and tip. But if I show the rig three view, uh, I have a way to do the procedural setup with that, like increase the number of points. And then if I go back here, I'm going to see more points. Only the way I was doing the rename using that name sop uh, is to uh, rename the first joint, the first point to root, uh, like the middle point to middle, and the last uh, joint to tip. Now when I go there, I still have my three points. That's what I use as, uh, as controls there. Uh, so from those three points, I'm generating a Bezier curve. So this is generated on the fly. Uh, so there is a mode as well. If you go, let's put the curve solver. So if you go there and use the, this mode. So target IDs, that's what I had. But this time with a curve geom geometry. So instead of using control, uh, control uh, points, it's going to use... Uh, the second input as if it was a geometry. And you can specify the primitive index as well uh, because you could have like more than one curve on your geometry. So target ID, so this is giving the target points as integers. Well, there is also an overlay load using that, that group parameter, but you could also go and say uh, get point transforms. and do the same job as I was doing there. So target points put star on the group from the first input and plug the targets like this. It's going to give you the same um, result. Okay, so this. This is using target ID. So there's a signature as well. So if I disconnect there, there's a signature using transforms. So target transforms. Hmm. So this fails currently. So it's, it's using uh, a list of matrices uh, using transform like that. So I can plug the targets into the X forms there and it should be getting me the, giving me the, the right uh, result. Only there's a problem there uh, because this node has an output for points, point numbers, but I'm not feeding at any point numbers. So this is just a pass through when I was in the other mode, it was outputting the points. So what I can do, I can either just disconnect that. So it's going to go here, and this one is going to use points star, so all the points. Or I can go and do something like that. So the points that I'm targeting here uh, are, are driving the set point transforms. So I won't go into detail I show everything you can do with this node, but the stretch is pretty, pretty fun to play with. Uh, we have, yeah, so the one thing I need to uh, demonstrate is how to use a twist attribute. So to use a twist, twist attribute, you must go under, under a node and you must create a floating point attribute or a vector attribute. So on the rig pose nodes, we have a way to output uh, parameters. So I'm going to output the rotates. So here, uh, so I have an R attribute. And if I go and put down a spreadsheet and display R, so it's set to zero, so that's fine. But now if I go and select the tip here, and let's say I'm going to change the rotation to something like that. That should give me, I need to do 
Uh, so I can do r dot z or r uh, square brackets two. So those are the two formats we support. Or if it's a floating point attribute, you just give the name of the attribute and that should be fine. So you use the angle mode. The default mode is going to use the attribute if you have it, otherwise it's going to fall back on the angle, uh, on the default mode. Uh, so this is fun. So let's go back on the edit controls there and actually just animate that. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So it's twisting. And let's display the, the geometry for that. I can make it twist more than this. There we go. Uh, then we have control to uh, keep the root orientation if you want, or keep the control orientation for the tip, so you, you can work with that. Uh, the other one is the squash. So if I do stretching, oops. So this is, as it stretches, it's going to try to preserve the volume. And you can, uh, you can play with that if you want. So let's go here and try to make it stretch more. Uh, here I have expressions installed on that. So it's better if I put down another rig pose to uh, do manipulations. Okay, so let's make that stretch a bit more. Uh, don't want to do an animation, just just reposition that like this. So if I play that, uh, you see that it's doing that. Uh, we don't see the stretching really well. So let's add or enable the textures. Okay, and now we should see the stretching happening or the twisting happening. Okay, so this is beha behaving fine like I wanted. Uh, let's dive in again. Uh, so I have everything there. So I think we're done with that with that uh, solve curve uh, VOP, VOP note. Uh, so thanks for watching.